Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. It is now mid-April. This has been, by all accounts, a record-setting month here on the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. We have had so much to talk about from Calipari going to Arkansas, Mark Pope going to Kentucky, recruiting, portal, UConn, back-to-back -back national championships. There has been so much to talk about, and I so very much appreciate everybody's support with this channel. I bring it up, though, because there is one fan base that has sat there and said, Torres, listen, enough of the Calipari nonsense, enough of the Mark Pope. We need you to talk about our team. That is the Indiana Hoosiers. So Indiana, over the course of the weekend, they did pick up a guy that, in my opinion, Miles Rice is one of the top, I think he's maybe the best lead guard in the portal. We did a portal update Sunday night, kind of addressed it, and Indiana fans said, Torres, that's still not enough. We need more in-depth breakdown of our team, who we got, and what it all means in the grand scheme for the 2024-2025 season. I bring it up to say, Indiana fans, today you are in luck. That is because while I've been focused on boring old Arkansas, boring old Calipari, my boy Mike Effin Woodson has been underground in a bunker, breaking down tape, and on Tuesday, you talk about a mega commitment. Mike Woodson, Indiana, gets a commitment, seven-foot center. Umar Balo began his career at Gonzaga, played the last two years at Arizona, 12.10 rebounds per game. Some believe he is the best player of the transfer portal. Well, on Tuesday afternoon, he committed to the Indiana Hoosiers. And with that, I just got one question for you, people. I just got one question. That's this. How about my guy, Mike Effin Woodson? Mike Effin Woodson, do you see this guy? Look at this face right here. He is a god. He is the portal whisperer. Mike freaking Woodson does it again. By the way, you can see on the little scroller there, if you want one of these bad boys, Mike F. and Woodson, Aaron Torres, online.com slash merchandise. Grab one for yourself. By the way, we also have the Indiana account on Twitter, Torres on Indiana. But that said, though, we got to talk about this commitment and, and really what it means in the grand scheme after a busy, busy, busy offseason for Mike Woodson so far. My guy ain't done yet. First of all, when it comes to Balo, first of all, the recruitment itself of Balo was insane, okay? So my understanding, listen, he's a very good player. We're going to talk about him in a minute. But he's a fifth-year guy, true center, kind of that cliche, probably doesn't have a great spot in the NBA. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a ton of value in modern college basketball. And so when he entered the portal, he heard from all the big names, goes to Indiana on Tuesday. There is a report that he is set to visit Louisville after he visits Indiana, cancels the Louisville visit. Then you hear that Calipari and Arkansas are trying to get involved. Yet before Umar Balo gets on a plane to Fayetteville at any point, Mike Effin Woodson closes the deal. So we've seen reports about numbers, whatever, who cares? It's the NIL era. I don't really care, but this kid is a stud and he's a difference maker. Now, listen, do I think he's the best player in the portal? I saw some outlets uh, put him there. No disrespect. I don't think he is. But what I do think he is is a game-changing center on both ends of the floor, okay? This is a guy that last season at Arizona, a team that was pretty much in the top 10 essentially the entire season. This is a guy that averaged last season 12 points. He averaged a team-high 10 rebounds per game. He averaged, on top of that, a block and a half per game, about a 50% from the field kind of guy. And when I look at him, listen, he's not perfect. If he was, he'd be in the NBA. But seven-foot center, five years of college experience, played three at Gonzaga, two at Arizona, has been part of winning programs, and he is a difference maker on both ends of the floor. Listen, he's not a guy that's going to step out and hit threes. He's not a new-age guy. I get that. But at the same time, just watch Arizona games. An X factor on both ends of the floor. Catches the ball in the post. Uh, if it's within 10 feet, he's dunking it. If, it. if it's within five feet, he's dunking it. If, it. if he catches the ball within five, six, seven, eight feet of the basket, it's game over. You're not stopping him. And by the way, 
By no means am I comparing him to the reigning two-time national player of the year, but you, you look at the X factor, the difference that a legitimate, huge, big body down low can cause the problems it can cause for other teams. Nobody had an answer for Zach Eady all year. Not saying Umar Balo is in any way, shape, or form Zach Eady. But when you can dump it down and get an automatic two or go to the foul line, it creates problems for the other team. On top of that, Balo is also just an X factor down low at the rim. This is a guy, again, about one and a half blocks per game. And remember, you know, he only played about 25 minutes per game for Arizona uh, because they had the backup Crevis. Sometimes they went small with Keisha Johnson at the five. You get this kid in, he is impacting the floor on both ends of the court. I think what's interesting, though, is how Balo fits in with all of the other pieces that Mike Woodson has assembled and continues to assemble, okay? Like I said, we did not do a really big uh, reaction to the Miles Rice commitment, basically because it was on Saturday. I essentially um, had basically done content for like 10 straight days at that point, going back to pre-Final Four. I was just like, I'm not, I'm not doing a reaction video at, at four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Okay. But going back to Miles Rice from Washington State, who committed a few days ago, listen, I, I know I said that Balo probably, in my opinion, was, was a little bit overrated as far as a portal difference maker. I think Miles Rice might be underrated. A lot of people probably didn't pay a ton of attention to Washington State until late in the year, but he was the Pac 12 freshman of the year this year, 15 points per game, four assists per per game. Um, not a great point shooter. And I know that's a point of contention with Indiana fans, but to me, Miles Rice, one of the best lead guards in this portal class and what he brings to Indiana. To me, it's funny. I was talking to a buddy of mine who's an Indiana guy. It's almost the exact opposite of what you had with Xavier Johnson, Xavier Johnson, who obviously dealt with injuries, but Xavier Johnson was a high risk, high reward, elite athlete, but a little bit erratic over the last couple of years if you're an Indiana fan. And so I bring it up because Xavier Johnson, all of the tangible things were incredible. Size, speed, height, weight, leaping ability. Miles Rice is kind of the opposite. He doesn't blow you off the floor. He doesn't have a 42-inch vertical leap, but he just doesn't make mistakes. I, I just think he is a complete point guard, a complete lead guard, led Washington State to the tournament, and I think he is going to thrive under Mike Woodson. And as I said on the Sunday reaction video, I think he is going to bring an air of maturity to the Indiana program as well. So you add Balo, fifth year senior. You add Miles Rice, who, how about this, will be a fourth year sophomore next year. Redshirted for one year. Obviously, for people who don't know the Miles Rice story, the commitment now at Indiana, his what should have been his redshirt freshman year, terrifying story, um, actually was diagnosed with cancer. And so, I mean, you, you, full recovery, all that. But if that doesn't, kind of reset, recalibrate, re-whatever, I'm here to tell you, I don't know that anything will. And so he is a mature kid, um, the right kind of kid for this program, I think, at this time. So you get two guys right now that have a combined eight years of college basketball experience under their belt, five with Balo, this will be year six, three for uh, Miles Rice, this will be year four. On top of that, the returnees are pretty darn good. The returnees are pretty darn good. Listen, Mackenzie and Baco, listen. I know we did a lot of Mackenzie and Baco content at this time last year. I thought he was pretty good. I really did. And listen, I know he came in as a projected one and done, as a projected difference maker, as a projected whatever it was, top five, top 10 pick. It didn't work out. But guess what? It didn't work out for a lot of the class of 2023. DJ Wagner's in the portal. Aaron Bradshaw has already transferred. That's not a criticism. It's just a reality that everybody's running their own race. Not everybody is a one and done. And I think we get so skewed on like, well, this kid was a lot, a, a McDonald's all American. So he has to be, well, what, what went wrong? Nothing went wrong with Mackenzie and Baco. He averaged 12 points per game. He averaged 12 and a half points per game as a true freshman in the big 10. And I think you get him back for another year with another year of maturity behind him, another year of confidence, another year of growth. I think he has a chance to be an all-league type player next year. 12 and a half points per game as a freshman, four boards. And like everybody else at Indiana, the three-point shooting needs to improve 33% this year. Guess what? That's what you got an offseason for. On top of that, Trey Galloway. Trey Galloway's obviously got to get his numbers back to where they were from a shooting perspective. 
I think having a lead guard like Miles Rice will help. You know what else is going to help? Having a seven foot one, 290 pound center in Umar Balo down low. You dump the ball to him, you try to double team him. Balo kicks it out, bang, wide open threes. I think it also helps Malik Renault. Malik Renault is a player that I have always liked, you know, probably the most consistent Indiana Hoosier this past year. This past season for for the the the, the Hoosiers, I, I guess I can't say he was more consistent than Kalel Ware, but you get the point. 15 points, six boards, 33% from three. And again, another situation where you can play Renew down low, but now that you have Umar Balo, you can allow Renew to stretch the floor as well. That to me is an important variable, right? Malik Renew, you want to play in the NBA, you got to be able to hit threes. You, you hit 33% of your three-point shots last season. Um, and you took about 150 of them. Now, can that get to 36, 37%? Then you're probably an NBA player. So it allows the best version of Malik Renu. And of course, Bryson Tucker, the young uh, wing that committed a few weeks ago. So this is exciting times for Indiana. Now, Mike Woodson has to do it. It has to translate on the court. But I'm here to tell you, I'm looking at rosters right now. I'm updating that top 25 constantly. Big Ten's wide open next year. Um, Wisconsin, we don't know if A.J. Storr is coming back. Purdue obviously loses Zach Eady. Michigan State, I don't even know what to make of them. Iowa, I don't even know who's on their roster anymore. Everybody's transferring out of there. You got the West Coast schools coming, and I think UCLA will be good, but how good? USC is putting together a roster under Eric Musselman. So I just bring it up to say Big Ten is wide open in 2024, 2025, and Indiana has as much talent as anybody and high-end talent. I keep saying it. And this is the Mike Woodson philosophy. I've never talked to him about it, but I feel confident in saying it. I believe Mike Woodson's like, I'm going to bet on talent and upside every time. It works pretty much everywhere else. Yes, UConn won a national championship through development, through evaluation. They also got a lot of NBA dudes on their roster. Uh, Illinois, Elite Eight team. Terrence Shannon will be a top 10 pick if, depending on what happens with the off-the-court stuff. Coleman Hawkins is an NBA player. You need Difference making dudes. Indiana has them. And finally, let me say this. They might not be done. Cannon Carlisle, obviously 6'4 freshman guard from Stanford, uh, is expected to be on campus this weekend. He's frankly, like if, if we're just being blunt here, um, the ex expectation is that he will commit over the course of this weekend. 11 and a half points per game as a freshman. I thought he actually was very good. The numbers are a little bit deceptive. Got a late start. He was at Stanford. The academic people had some issues with some stuff from the summer. I know the whole story. It wasn't a big deal. Basically, um, you know, he got a bad grade in summer school after getting admitted, and Stanford said, we need you to take a deep breath and focus on the academics. Well, he comes back about mid-December, aver uh, averages close to 12 points, 11 and a half points per game, had about 28, 29 in a win over Arizona. Um, and I'm here to tell you, you know, I know a lot of the, the guys over at Stanford or at least the former staff, they really believe in this kid. They really believe he has NBA upside. So we will see if Cannon Carlisle commits. If he does, we might be talking about the best roster. I think we're already potentially talking about the best roster on paper going into next year in the Big Ten. But Indiana fans get excited, man. You got yourselves a squad for 2023-2024. Shout out to my guy, Mike Effett Woodson. Mike Evan Woodson, baby. Mike Evan Woodson. You can see the, the link right there on the uh, screen. It will also be in the show description. This is a great day to be a Hoosier, and I think there's more good news potentially to come.